here. Uh, last year, I was in Harlow Town Centre at a street stall, um, as I normally do on Saturdays, to speak to constituents. Completely unexpectedly, a man who I know to be from the left came at me screaming, go back to Israel. It happened so quickly, I was unable to take a photo. But I know that anti-Semitic acts like this are becoming increasingly commonplace but unthinkable a few years ago. Demonstrations outside Parliament and Labour Party headquarters would not have been well attended if anti-Semitism wasn't seen by many as a dangerous and growing problem. And that's why I'm glad this timely debate is going ahead. Honourable friend, give way on that point. Uh, yes, of course. I thank my honourable friend for giving way. Um, he's from the Jewish community and I'm not. But does he agree with me that we all have a duty to fight anti-Semitism? Not because it's the right thing to do, not because it's the decent thing to do, but it's essential for the well-being of our wider society. Because history shows us anti-Semitism is always the thin end of a very nasty and very wide, potentially racist wedge. Yeah. My, my honourable friend puts it exactly why and but in essence sums up much of what will be debated today. I've also been amazed to see guards outside synagogues, the shadow cabinet member mentioned schools, and I remember being at a synagogue where the rabbi said to the Jewish people inside, please do not congregate outside when you, when you finish the service. And I thought, how can this be in the 21st century? when we thought we'd escaped the horrors of Nazi Germany, that Jews are told by a rabbi in a synagogue, please don't congregate outside because you might get abuse or something even worse. Now it seems to me this appears to be some section, in some sections of the left, an, an accepted belief that either Jews are all Israeli settlers, or they're very rich, or they're part of the capitalist establishment. And these claims are then linked to even more sinister conspiracy theories. Now, at best, it used to be acceptable to use the fig leaf of Zionist or Israelite and as a cloak for anti-Semitism. Now, anti-Semitism has got so bad that the people who hate us, who hate the Jews, don't even use those anymore. Anti-Semitism is out in its naked viciousness for everyone to see. And the air has grown tighter. It's, you feel, when you feel very hot and you undo a button on your shirt and your mouth goes dry. It is still a great country. It is still a wonderful place for Jewish people. But things have changed. Things have changed. And I never imagined, because I always thought this was the greatest country in the world. My father was an immigrant here, escaped from pogroms in Libya. And I never imagined that one would ever feel an air tightening in this country. And I would like to give special appreciation for the enormous work of the Honourable Member for Bassetlaw. What a, a great man he is. A great man. And the APPG against anti-Semitism and other Honourable Labour MPs like the Member for, for Dudley and the Shadow Cabinet Member who is a good friend of the State of Israel. A good friend of the State of Israel. Other members of Ilford North and many others. But I genuinely believe that the current Labour leadership are at best turning a blind eye to the problem and at worst condoning anti-Semitism. And I say this with a heavy heart because I see the membership of the dubious Facebook groups, the defence of anti-Semitic murals, the phony reports produced by the now Baroness Chakrabarti. These three unwise monkeys see no anti-Semitism, hear no anti-Semitism, and do not speak out against anti-Semitism. That's problem one. The second problem is social media. And has again been highlighted by both of the front benches, the internet has become a sewer for anti-Semitism. We spend so much time worrying about Facebook collecting our data for advertisement, advertisements, when it really has become, and Twitter, a social network acting as a septic tank in which a disgusting and non-stop stream of anti-Semitic sewage collects. Yeah. And what is even worse, that when the victim, someone is a victim of anti-Semitism from social media sites, the duty is on the victim to get it corrected and not the other way yeah. round. And why is it that books and newspapers are rightly punished for the publication 
of any kind of anti-Semitic content, but social media platforms act with impunity. They should be subject to the same laws as everybody else. So we have to make sure that community leaders do everything possible and political leaders to condemn anti-Semitism in every form it takes without hesitation or equivocation. Leadership has to set an example. We have to do more to support the Holocaust Education Trust, and I've been to outfit with them to train teachers. We need to make sure that university campuses are welcoming environments for students of all backgrounds. The Office of Students should play a role here, as the APPG for anti-Semitism recommends. And the government must go further in literally stamping out all extremist terror groups like prescribing Hezbollah's political arm. People should not be allowed to march down the streets of Trafalgar Square and Whitehall with Hezbollah flags, uh, waving Hezbollah flags. So this debate is a vital opportunity to bring to the fore the widespread and escalating problem of anti-Semitism, but it is an opportunity to be constructive. Let's go forward. Let's the leadership of, political, of all the political parties unite condemn anti-Semitic content, deal with the social media companies and do more to educate our people about anti-Semitism. Yeah. Yeah.